Well, I'll be telling them to go and try your best because to win any test match, I think you have to play well. So if we play well, I think we'll win this match effort. I don't need to g up the guys. The guys are really well prepared for this particular game. We've played on some uh, terrific wicket. We're looking forward to the game. Bubble, we're going to enjoy it and we're going to get stuck into it and see if we can't get one all. Good morning and welcome to Calcutta's wonderful Eden Gardens for this second McDowell Test match. At Ahmedabad, you saw a fairly fierce debate between two of our commentators about the outcome of that match. Well, here yeah, in Calcutta's early morning mist, as you can see, the game is still getting to them. Well, this is Calcutta for you. Typical hazy morning. Fantastic venue for cricket. Easily one of the best cricket grounds in the world. Home team India, my team, 1-0 up. Could they make it 2-0? I think they will. They're on a roll, confidence level should be high. Srinath devastating in the last game. Could he repeat it? I think he could. Kanguli, first time you have a Bengali playing here in 27 years. Won't he have the crowd behind him? Come on, India, get out there and try and make it 2-0. Big opportunity for you. I can't believe it. I really can't. A spinner's pitch and Srinath bowls the boys out. A few dubious decisions, I suppose, but... Incredible how it was a bowler's match. I mean, Fani de Villiers making top score, 67. Simcox, Donald staying with him, Kumbli making valuable runs, and all the top order batsmen failing on both sides. 170 to win. Got to believe that they can get those runs. An indifferent, indifferent batting performance, really. But, new day. New venue, new test match. The magnificent Eden Gardens, Donald storming in, clues now on debut keen, Gibbs a debut 100. Ever the optimist Trevor Quirk at Underbar, the pitch was a talking point. To see what it looks like here, let's go down and meet David Hooks. This is one of the great cricket stadiums in the world. It holds about 120,000 people when full and the ground is in fabulous condition. As far as the pitch is concerned, well yesterday we took a sample when we put the stunt cam in and as you can see, the surface of the pitch, nice and hard, but with the cross-section, not a lot of depth to the soil. And this is borne out by the fact that on the pitch already, there are a number of cracks. As you can see, some cracks already all over the surface of the pitch, but very, very hard. No movement at all in the soil as yet. I expect it to be a very, very good pitch for batting. The only thing that I would say is a touch untoward is with the naked eye, you can see just a slight rise on a good length at this end of the pitch. Nothing too dangerous, nothing too serious. And perhaps with these cracks, maybe as the game wears on, the pitch will get a bit lower and perhaps take a bit of turn. But I would expect that the captain that wins the toss would have no hesitation in batting. For the team that for Hooksy, after climbing 230 steps, all he had to do was kneel. Well, it looks like a good toss to win with the two captains. Here's Robin Jackman. <laughs> Out in the middle with the two captains and match referee John Reed. Can't see. One one at last. Eventually, yeah, uh, we're going to have a bat. Looks a good surface, and um, you know we're obviously very keen to win this one. So we really want to play well. We're very keen. So um, it's a good start for us to win the toss, and um, just going to score some runs now. Tell us a little bit about the team you selected. Well, we've um, got the one force change with John T being out and Herschel Gibbs comes in, he'll be batting at number three. And then we've got um, Fani out for uh, Lance Kuzner. Um, the reasoning for that was I think Lance is a little bit quicker than Fani and also that Fani um, will be more effective, I think, at home than on these pitches and also bolster the batting a little bit. Thanks for being so explicit and good luck. Thanks. Sashin, is, is it a major train smash that this toss went against you? Uh, I have not won so many tosses, but uh, definitely it's a good toss to win, and uh, I couldn't manage that, but it's, it's fine. Now, your, your team, uh, who have you left out of your side? You've just made one change. Ganguly comes in place of Manjureka. So who will now open the innings for you? Rahul Dravid is going to open the innings. Two debuts there for South Africa, Lance Klusner and Herschel Gibbs. Both had pretty good warm-up matches. For India, Rahul Dravid will open the bowling.
Good morning and welcome to the Eden Gardens in Calcutta for the third day of what's been a sensational test match so far. Play of day two at Calcutta's Eden Gardens with Javagal Srinath still searching for some luck. It remains elusive. His fans though had their own idea of support. And his partner, Venkatesh Prasad, had a little more luck going his way. And this time it's out! Darryl Cullinan played some spanking shots. But his captain, Hansi Cornier, flattered to deceive. Brian McMillan was part of the slide. Good shot. He's going in! And Cullinan's dismissal even surprised the bowler. Probably still does. The crowd was in ecstasy, but for new opener Raul Dravid, there was a fiery welcome. It produced a fiery reply. And that's a fine one shot. And that's four hours. New man Herschel Gibbs provided the jaunty flavor. And Donald, a burst of lightning. Oh, he's bowled him! He's shattered his stumps with an express delivery. And, my goodness me, Donald now at his fearsome best. Indeed, it's South Africa and Alan Donald who hold all the aces just now. But just what mystery does the pitch hold? Let's ask David Hooks, who's down in the middle. Thanks very much, Harsha. Well, I'm actually not in the middle. I'm down by the practice pitches at Fine Lake. One of the reasons that I'm here is just to show you the texture and the composition of the practice pitches. Obviously the same as the centre. And these practice pitches have been used was to Mongia and have a look at this. Fast bowler, new ball and bang. Straight through into the keeper's glove. So plenty of encouragement to both bowlers there, but also to Baston having some untoward thoughts. So the third day, perhaps a bit of the same. Let's take a look at the situation the match finds itself in South Africa. 428 all out after they were 339 for two at one stage. But India, 152 for six after Mungia 35 and Dravid 31 had given them their best start for a while. That's the situation the match finds itself in. India extending their innings to 329 all out. Sensational 100 from Azaruddin Kumble made 88. But thereafter, it's been a bit of an anticlimax as far as stroke play is concerned. But South Africa has been grinding their way through to 160 for one. Kirsten is 82. you nose to nose today because I've got a bit of a cold but can you hear me my good man can you hear me Crooky, what are you doing here still alive and kicking I thought you'd never recover from that onslaught of yesterday it was brilliant but it only happens maybe once or twice in a decade of test match cricket it can't happen twice in one test match so we're not worried about that it's history just like you're the optimist I'm an optimist too I think it can happen again can you imagine Kumble going out there and getting 88 when none of the other four batsmen, at least the top four batsmen? 9 for 1 is what South Africa effectively have on the board. Get those tissues ready, you're going to cry your eyes out. No problem, I think the Indians will bat out even 8 hours if they have to. South Africa, I think, are a little worried. They should have carried on batting last night. That 
they should have done, but it won't matter in the end. One all going to come for, oh, how exciting that will be. Well, whatever happens, all I can say is it's been a fantastic test match. Too true. I don't think we've seen the end of that debate just yet. No debate, though, about the state of the pitch, and that's why David Hooks this morning is nowhere near it. Thanks very much, Harsha. Well, at this stage of the day, traditionally, we do a pitch report. But with so many runs being scored, nearly a 1,000 runs in three days of Test cricket, 337 yesterday, and there were 12 overs remaining when the umpires went off a bad light, I thought we'd have a look at the output and see if that is a contributing factor to the number of runs that have been scored. This over at Eden Gardens is a bit like an upturned saucer. So when the ball starts to run away, it runs very quickly towards the fence. Yesterday, we saw two very good examples of this. Gary Kirsten, the batsman on both occasions, and have a look at this when he faces Josie. This outfield, that ball's running away down to the boundary line very, very fast. Well, this is the area where the ball went down. Past third man at the high court end. A lot of grass on the oval, but it's also very firm and very hard underneath. And just an over later for Gary Kirsten, facing the same bowler, he realised that if he wanted the ball to go to the fence, he'd have to perhaps hit it a bit harder. 